All right. Hello, everyone. This is Omer with iVision. Thank you all for uh, jumping on today's call. Um, we have titled this call uh, uh, Sales, Sales, and Sales, consistent with last last webinar, which is updates, updates, and more updates. Uh, very, very uh, creative there on our part. Um, but this is going to be, um, you know, kind of a, a call really specific to sales. Uh, George is going to take over that part of the, the conversation. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit real quick about just some uh, uh, system enhancements, features, updates that have been made over the last few weeks just to get everybody in the loop. Um, as always, this call is being recorded. We will email out a recording uh, after it's done, and then we will also post this recording in the reseller portal. Um, if you have any questions throughout this presentation, feel free to use your chat bubble. Everyone's been muted for this call, so just put your message in the chat. I'll do my best to answer the questions as they come on. Um, and then also, um, when George gives his presentation, uh, if you have questions with, relate, uh, with regards to sales, feel free to uh, put your questions in there, and then I will kind of help moderate those questions uh, with George as well. So uh, with that said, let's get going. Um, so to the topics for today's call, just some quick housekeeping. We're going to talk about new features, enhancements, and fixes, uh, what to do about political campaigns as we get into uh, – <clears throat> get into um, electro, elec election season, things like that. Uh, you may be approached by political campaigns looking to do some texting, so I want to cover some of that. And then uh, sales tips and tricks, which will be presented by George, uh, where we'll talk about uh, promising verticals, sales tactics, tips for successful demos, and ideas that work. So with that said, um, we have launched the first phase of the uh, kiosk slideshow and I'd like to uh, briefly show that to you um, in, in just a second here. Um, we do have a phase two and a phase three that's still pending unfortunately. Uh, it's just such a massive undertaking that uh, we didn't want to hold everybody up uh, by, by waiting for everything to be done. So we wanted to get the first phase launched so that people can start using it um, and then it slowly incorporate uh, phase two and phase three into the mix. So um, phase phase one is uh, pretty straightforward. It's active for everybody. You'll see the slideshows button in the top right corner of your screen. When you hit slideshows, you can then create multiple slideshows. So I'm just going to jump into one here. And in the slideshow, you can then create slides. Um, each slide is customizable in terms of the uh, background graphic or color that you, you add in here. And then in terms of the dis display date settings, when you want that slide to appear. Is it ongoing? Does it have a specific start and end date? Are there certain days of the week that it's going to be displayed or not displayed? And is there a certain time period that the slide is going to display or not display? So you can customize all those here. And you'll see that we have been making some enhancements to this first phase of the slideshow by incorporating some of that in here. So you can see on the slide if it's ongoing, when it's set to display, the days of the week are all indicated under the slide. Um, and then you can uh, reposition slides very easily just by dragging them around the little toolbar here um, and delete slides as well as add additional slides. Um, these will automatically turn on and off based on the date parameters that you've set in the slideshow. And then once you have created your slideshow, you can assign it to a kiosk or a series of kiosks, uh, multiple kiosks, by going through the, uh, the configuration here to uh, assign it to the kiosk and then set um, you know, the display side, the width, and the fill color for those uh, kiosks that you're applying it to. So um, we created a very simple, uh, I should say, I created a very simple, um, really quick and dirty uh, tutorial, video tutorial of this that we can email out to everybody. We don't have a lot of extensive uh, training uh, collateral on it just yet, but all that stuff is coming. So we wanted to launch it uh, and get it out there. And then we plan on continually enhancing this and adding some of the additional features. But we have the preview feature working and then, um, and then the ability to see when the slides are appearing or hiding uh, based on, on your configuration here. Um, and so we're really excited about this. You can start uh, applying it to your kiosks. 
and uh, there's just going to be more, more and more features coming down, uh, down the pipe on this. So um, like I said, phase one is launched and active for all users. Phase two and phase three are pending completion. You can see the things that we're going to be working on in phase two and phase three of the uh, slideshow launch. Um, we've added the ability to delete and archive target lists. A lot of people have requested that over the last few months, last few years. Uh, it's been kind of an ongoing issue. If you send a message and you've sent it to a target list, that that uh, target list is now um, locked essentially. So now you can archive and delete target list. Uh, there's a question here, uh, real quick, on the kiosk summary. Uh, sorry, on the kiosk slideshow. How's this different than the rotating picks? It's 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 not necessarily different from the rotating picks, but the new slideshow system is going to have a lot more capabilities in terms of being able to customize each one of those slides. Right now, with the rotating pictures, you upload your three, four, five rotating pictures, and it just cycles through them. You can't decide if you want slide one or slide three to appear on Fridays. Uh, you can do that with the new slideshow. You cannot do that with the old rotating picture uh, feature. So that, that's the main difference, just a lot more flexibility and control over those individual slides. Um, okay, so the ability to delete archive target lists uh, is, is active. Um, clients have, a have asked for the ability to see the total sent messages on the kiosk summary report. Up until now, the kiosk summary report would show you sent messages that were specific to that kiosk. So um, any messages that kind of weren't specific to the kiosk were omitted from the count. We've now added that in there just for a little bit more uh, comprehensive uh, data for your client so your client can see the total sent messages if that um, will match up to, for example, what you're billing them for so they can see that on the kiosk summary report. And then uh, two features that were added uh, just last week are the ability to delete a previously issued coupon and the ability to unredeem a coupon that was previously redeemed. So you can do this through the check-in manager. If there's a situation where somebody was issued a coupon and they weren't supposed to be issued a coupon, you can delete it from them. And then if somebody redeemed a coupon by mistake that they shouldn't have redeemed, you can unredeem it. So those are two new features that are available through the check-in manager. Um, and then we sent out a, a text blast about this um, just the other week, but we now support animated GIFs in MMS. So this really opens up the door to a lot of really cool things that you can do with an MMS message and animated GIFs. Um, it's supported on both text blasts and interactive messages. There's a great site for finding animated GIFs or even making your own, Giphy.com, which we've referenced here. But you want to note that the maximum file size of your MMS should be less than 500 kilobytes. I know in the past that we've set uh, the maximum is really one megabyte, and it is one megabyte with some carriers, but there are carriers that will reject the message if it's over 500 kilobytes. And we had a few clients that sent out text blasts, and a handful of those messages to certain carriers were rejected because it was over 500 kilobytes. So I think just for the, for the, for the sake of <clears throat> ensuring maximum delivery to all the carriers that support MMS, you really want to keep your file size to less than 500 kilobytes uh, in total. Okay, keep in mind that the video or the animated GIF or the image is then being compiled along with the text and with the subject and with other elements that could potentially push that MMS file size to be larger than just the animated GIF by itself. Okay, so there are some additional pieces there that get compiled into the MMS which could increase the size. Uh, and then coming soon, we are adding MMS support for the birthday club and the auto-engage messages. So really trying to enhance the MMS capabilities across the board throughout the different features of our system so that you can engage your customers <clears throat> and your customers can engage their customers with, uh, with more robust MMS capabilities. So we're excited about that. Uh, that should be coming here in the next few weeks. All right, let's switch gears and talk about political campaigns. So have you been approached by a political campaign to do text messaging? And if so, here are some important guidelines to follow when having those discussions. So first and foremost is you cannot under any circumstances import an existing list for a political candidate or campaign. 
Typically, they'll tell you, oh, these people are opted in and they've consented to receiving alerts. That's not the case. They're usually obtaining that data from voter registration files, things of that nature. Those people have not consented to receiving that political com uh, campaign or uh, candidates <clears throat> alerts. Um, so they don't have... Uh, they don't have written permission to send text messages to these subscribers' numbers in most cases. And you really want to work with the organization to use a compliant opt-in method for building that list organically um, and not rely on an existing database. So we've had a few clients that have approached us, a few prospects that have approached us directly and through licensees uh, on behalf of political campaigns, and uh, they always somehow find access to some large database that they want to message. And really, the main, the main thing is here, you just don't want to have anything to do with that because it could come back to bite you. <clears throat> All right. We are going to switch gears, and we are going to talk about sales tips and tricks. And this is going to be presented by George, and I'm going to help moderate. Um, and, and real quick, before George gets started here, there's a question here about how to see the size of the MMS file being used. There's really no, no ability to see the, 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 the final size of your MMS uh, message um, until you send it to your phone. And once you send it to your phone, you can go into your message details and see the size of that message. But the, the, main, the main takeaway is if your animated GIF or if your video is 900 kilobytes, chances are that the additional text that you include in your message and the subject and things like that may send it over uh, the one megabyte limit. Or if it's 450 kilobytes, it may get uh, get past the 500 kilobyte maximum. So just give yourself plenty of buffer room to work with, I guess, and always test on your phone first to make sure that you're getting it properly before you go and you send it out to other other phones. So uh, at, at this time, I'm going to switch it over to George. Keep the questions coming with uh, with regards to sales and everything George is talking about, and I'll cut them off and, and interject when there's questions that, that he can answer. Good, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. Um, it's a great turnout, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to all of you. Again, as Omar indicated, send any of your questions, uh, uh, post them, and, and we'll try to answer them as best we can. Also, just as an aside, those of you who do not have my direct extension number, it's the office number plus 308, extension 308, and I'll also provide you with my cell number if there's an emergency sales call and you need uh, instant response. If I can accommodate you, I will. Uh, my cell number is 818-321-7454. The only thing I would request, especially those of you on the East Coast, remember there's a three-hour time difference. So don't call me at 8 o'clock in the morning your time because you'll be waking me up, uh, which I'm not crazy about that idea. In any event, let's get on to the, uh, the agenda. Promising verticals and prospective users. Uh, there's a list of them here that we've been, we being LA Tech Savings and iVision Mobile, have been very successful with, and I know many of you have also. Uh, the request I would have for any and all of you is if you have a particular vertical that we don't discuss or that is not listed here that you've been quite successful with, we'd love you to share that with us because um, you know, it may be something we're overlooking and uh, we don't want to overlook anything. Uh, we want to uh, be as, as comprehensive as possible. Restaurants, of course, first and foremost, almost any kind of food-related business. Everything from a sit-down restaurant on the high end to fast food to desserts such as yogurt or ice cream, what have you, all work extremely well, especially incorporating a rewards program, especially incorporating a birthday club. All of that is very, very good, and it's an easy or easier sell than many other verticals. We have had a lot of success in the last several years with uh, salons of most any types, in particular skin, beauty, massage, uh, hair salons, men's and women's, I might add, uh, works equally as well. A great vertical is car washes. Great in, in that uh, LA Tech Savings, for example, has nine or ten car washes, and each of them have 
in in many cases thousands of of subscribers to each of their uh, programs. They get a lot of repeat business. Uh, therefore, the loyalty programs are great. I've never run into a car wash who hasn't had some kind of loyalty program. Most of the old timers, st- some of them still use punch cards. And uh, you know, the answer to, well, punch cards work fine for me, um, is simply this. There's two drawbacks, and all of us as consumers have the same problems with punch cards. Um, number one, we lose them before we use them. And that becomes very frustrating and sometimes becomes an issue uh, with a with a, an account with the car wash themselves. And number two is we forget to bring them with us when we when we're when we need them. So we end up with three or four or five of them in our wallet, and then the car wash has to incorporate them all onto one punch card, and it becomes a pain in the butt. So it's real simple to show them the advantages. Of, of the loyalty rewards program on a kiosk as opposed to uh, a punch card. So um, it's a great vertical. We have car washes who are paying us because of a variety of different services uh, that we offer, well over $1,000, in some cases $2,000 a month because of the number of, of, of texts that they send out, but also uh, for other uh, things that we provide to them. For example, uh, the reputation management is a big feature, which we'll discuss a little later. Grooming, this kind of goes along with the salons above, only this is pet grooming. Uh, pet grooming, people are very, very um, concerned and adamant about grooming their pets religiously, boarding their pets, uh, pet supplies, all of those are really, in some, in some cases, all of the above for pet under the pet grooming, boarding, and supplies category. Some of our clients do all three. Some of them do only one. Some of them do two out of the three, etc. Home accessories. It's kind of like a boutique for your house, uh, where you go in and you buy uh, items for for your home, for decorations. Uh, you're accessorizing your your walls, your furniture, uh, maybe it's rugs, maybe it's wall hangings. All of those things are great, and they change their inventory on a regular basis. A lot of these uh, vendors or a lot of the uh, the accounts go to the gift shows that are held all over the country uh, periodically to buy new stock, to re-inventory um, their home accessory store, and we've had a lot of good luck with those types of, of, of businesses. Boutiques, in particular women's boutiques, but kids' boutiques uh, work equally as well. There's not as many men's stores or men's boutiques or clothing stores as there are women's and kids, but they're all good uh, because there's certainly something for them to promote and market all the time. Uh, My first account with LA Tech Savings, which is now almost 10 years on a month-to-month basis, uh, they have grown to 10 stores. They send out close to 20,000 texts a month. They become a wonderful accountant. Because they're so well-known in the Southern California area, I'm able to use their uh, name to bring in a lot of other accounts because everybody knows them. Um, yeah, so that's really important. Uh, by the way, it's almost 50,000 texts a month, not 20,000 texts a month. Um, resale stores, that's a great area. I overlooked it myself for a long period of time, but I know it works well. For example, uh, clothing resale stores. Uh, there are some very upscale resale stores where people sell their clothing to the resale stores who then resell them to the public. There are the thrift end of things, where it's a lower or middle end uh, of clothing. But that it's not only clothing. Sporting goods, um, play it again, uh, sports I think it's called, um, which is a, a franchise, a national franchise. People in this day and age, in this economy, resell a lot of things that are still good. Uh, they don't just donate it to Goodwill. They'll go in and they'll try to get money. And by the way, when you're 
pitching a resale store, you can pitch it from both ends. They can send out texts to their customers, we need, bring in your, your used denim, bring in your used uh, uh, leather jackets, whatever it may be. We're in, the, we're in the mode to buy those things. So it's encouraging, incentivizing people to bring their clothing in, to re-inventory these stores, as well as, of course, they're constantly um, selling, bringing in and selling uh, items, used items, new used items to the public. So there's, it's a great win-win situation. Vape and e-cig stores, uh, a, again, a great area. There's not many places that these types of stores can advertise and market what they do. Uh, don't forget, though, the age verification aspect, and that's something that you could use as a sales tool. We can do on text messaging a verification so you know that the texts are going to the appropriate people in the in the right age category and this uh, goes right into the liquor stores and bars with a 21 year old plus age verification same thing via text messaging uh, many of the states now I don't know how many but California is one and I know obviously Colorado Washington but there's I think about 17 or 20 states that cannabis is legal now and and consequently uh, again they don't have many places where they can advertise and market their product and services uh, so in a state where it is legal um, we can send out text you can send out text on their behalf with 10 digit uh, numbers only they can't use a five digit short code um, for cannabis it has to be a 10 digit number but again if you're not if you're in a state that sells cannabis legally um, go at, go knock on their doors it's a very viable vertical crafts we have uh, several color me minds which is a national uh, franchise we deal with the franchisees uh, Pino's palette which is another one we have some uh, standalone local independent ones they're also trying and and so they're also uh, always trying to get um, uh, new customers in they have special nights uh, where they drink wine and they paint special things or create special crafts it's certainly something worth pursuing um, again a reminder to send us your feedback with any other verticals that are that I haven't mentioned that work well for you and perhaps why they work well for you and uh, we could share those with all the licensees um, introducing a shop local program what is a shop local program a couple of the licensees throughout the country have created and we've kind of uh, 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 got on their coattail uh, they've worked with local chambers of commerce uh, and the chambers of commerce have become a client of the licensee themselves we are starting a program we being iVision here in, in Southern California with our local chamber that we're a member of the Northridge Chamber of Commerce uh, with a shop local program so uh, we can go into much greater detail as to how it works with you at another time but basically um, we approach the chamber and 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 solicit them to become a um, a license a, a, a an account of of iVision Mobile or LA Tech Savings in this in this situation. Why should a chamber join our and become an account of LA Chamber of Commerce or your local license? Well, for for a variety of reasons, and we've listed it on on the slide. Greater exposure to the community in general means more customers. More customers, therefore, means more sales. Increased sales means more jobs, and the local economy and community are strengthened. Uh, the chamber can also use texting instead of just sending out the emails that they send out uh, that never get opened by so many of their members. They can send out a text blast uh, to remind them of a breakfast meeting or an event of whatever it is. Also, this can become not just a cost for the chamber but they can actually make money as a result of it what we're doing um, our, our chamber has over 400 members um, we're uh, the chamber is putting the shop local program together 
to give their members an opportunity and an exposure to a local shop local texting program where for the participating members all they have to pay to the chamber is is uh ten dollars a month uh, and for that, they don't get a kiosk in their store. They don't get to build up a database. That's when they become a client of the local licensee of LA Tax Tax Savings. But all the chamber has to do, we're cha- char- charging our chamber $200 a month uh, to become um, a, a shop local uh, member. So all they need is 20 um, accounts, uh, and they're getting there at $10 an account, and they're getting their $200 back. If they get 30 or 40 or 50 accounts um, out of their 400 uh, uh, members, they're making money uh, on the program, and that's what we want them to do. But most importantly, from our perspective, it gets us as a licensee an opportunity to give a small taste of texting to a good percentage of their membership, and hopefully they see the benefit of it. We get the opportunity to sit down face-to-face with Joe's Pizza or whoever it may be and explain to them the benefits of becoming an account of LA Tech Savings. And now we can put a kiosk in your store. We can build up a, a database. We can send out text blasts for you and you alone. In the meantime, while they're paying their $10 a month, they're still getting one text that we will help create uh, for them once a month um, to the the uh, uh, people that join. How do people join? It's very simple. They join because they don't have a kiosk. The member, the 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 uh, chamber is constantly um, um, promoting the shop local program, and all they have to do is text the short code. In in our case, it's NVC North Valley Chamber NVC to five five six seven eight to join. And, and the, the local um, uh, businesses can have signs which will help create in their place of business so they can get their own customers to join. And hopefully they'll become a big database, which eventually they'll be able to share in when they become a member of, uh, of uh, a, a, an account of um, LA uh, um, Tech Savings or your local license. Let me get off the chamber thing for a second and get into uh, some basics. Actually, Sales actually, tactics. before you do, before you do before you do that, George, there's a couple a yes. few questions that came in here that I'd like to answer real quick, and then and then we can Go move for on. It. So the first question is, how complex a program are you creating for two hundred dollars a month? And the answer is, the shop local program is a little bit of a complex configuration. There's a lot of pieces to it. And it really depends on, you know, how you categorize the different businesses and if, even if you're doing categorization for those businesses or if you're just having one funnel for seeing all the businesses. So it's really a matter of how, how detailed you want it to be. But it is a little bit of work. Um, we have uh, iVision LA Tech Savings. We have a package for $209 is 5,000 messages. So it really doesn't matter – how the client is using the system, whether they're doing shop local or emergency alerts or retail, you know, coupons, loyalty, things like that. We all we look at it strictly from a, a number of message uh, perspective. So uh, 209 for 5,000 messages, and that includes any type of communication they're doing, whether it's the internal communication for the members or the shop local program. We kind of bundle it in together and. Um, the way that it works, uh, the shopping local program, are they sending deals to local businesses that aren't participating? And the answer is no. It's only for those chamber member businesses that are participating, that are paying the $10 a month or so to be a part of that program. They're the ones that are going to be showcased in the shop local program. Um, and as far as creating individual mobile coupons for each offer within the program, like I said, it, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, upfront work to set up the structure. Uh, Lori has created a great tutorial uh, and, and, and kind of a, um, a, a layout for what that structure looks like, and, and we can definitely share that with those that are interested. But we look at it from the perspective of the chamber is almost like another licensee, right? Uh, we really foster our relationships with our licensees because we sign up one licensee that then can potentially bring on 
20, 30, 40, 50 plus accounts, if not more. So this, it's the same relationship with the chamber. It basically allows you as a licensee to go on and bring on another company, the chamber, that can bring you more clients underneath them. And so we're looking at it as really a foot in the door to, to tap into the member network of those local businesses that, that will look at the shop local program. They say, hey, this is great. How do I now do this for my business and sign up directly with iVision, directly with LA Tech Savings? And that's where I think is, is, uh, it's, it's really a uh, huge potential there. Well, there's another thing too, accounts. Omer, if I may. Uh, sure. uh, we're using, uh, most areas, geographic areas, have a number of chambers within the general reach of wherever you're located. Uh, I know here in the San Fernando Valley, we probably have 10 or 12 different chambers that include thousands of members between them. And they all know each other. They all work with each other because they share different events. We are looking to have our chamber, North, uh, North Valley Chamber, refer us to other chambers. As you all know, it's so much easier to go in uh, with an invitation, uh, with a name, and, and so we're expecting to roll this out to dozens of chambers, uh, which you can do too in your area once you work the kinks out of your, your first local one. So, yeah, and uh, we had just on? one initial, yeah, you know, I was just going to mention that. Um, uh, we had one initial meeting with our chamber after uh, to introduce it to the members that were there, and just out of that meeting, there was not only uh, a tremendous amount of interest in the shop local program, but as a result, we've we've gotten four or five leads of members that actually are ready to sign up directly, uh, you know, in addition to the shop local programs. I think it was a very lucrative uh, opportunity. Um, the main point of contact at the chamber is usually the executive director, uh, or the director of the chamber. And then um, if you email Lori directly, she can follow up with some additional collateral uh, that she's put together that, that talks more about um, the, the configuration or I should say the layout of the shop local program. So she can, uh, Including a two-minute video that, that really sets it out in a simple way uh, that, that you could forward on or bring into um, a presentation with your local chamber. Um, you know, obviously a picture is worth a thousand words, and, and she did a great job on that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you and, and somebody here mentioned that they do this now, and they trade the programming fee for the membership uh, to be part of the chamber. That's a great idea as well. We, um, we basically uh, waive the first month in order to uh, sponsor their first member luncheon where we are able to present it. So we waive the month of service knowing that, you know, we're going to have kind of a foot in the door to present and, and be very active with the chamber and, and, and promoting the shop local program. So for us, we're looking at the long-term value of not only the chamber, but then getting those individual members um, set up as well. And it All gives right. you, uh, your, your business, a lot of credibility too, because basically the chamber is endorsing you. And uh, as a result of that yesterday, uh, we brought in our first direct uh, we being LA Tech Savings, our first direct account as a result of the relationship with the chamber. They don't even want to go on the $10 a month program. We want to get a kiosk in. We want to start a te uh, rewards program. Let's do it. So, um, you know, it's, it, it, it'll pay off immediately, but you're also building uh, uh, a lot going forward. All right. Okay, sales tactics. Um, which met method is the best? You know, the bottom line is whatever works best for you. Some of you are comfortable cold calling and door knocking. Uh, I happen to be one of those people. If I'm in an area, if I'm in a mini mall where I look around and there's 12 stores and three of them I think are really possible prospective clients, I, I'll make up some excuse. You know, I was just in the area for an appointment, and I had some free time, and uh, here's my card. I know you probably don't have the time to see me today, but – and and uh, I've picked up a number of clients over the years doing that. Some of you are totally uncomfortable doing that. And if you're not comfortable, you're going to project that you're not comfortable and probably not be successful. But uh, if you do have a degree of comfort, I wouldn't hesitate. If you're in an area anyway and you see somebody, and if you walk in, by the way, and you look and you see they have a kiosk on their counter, um, and obviously it's not yours, 
that's a great sign. Why is that a great sign? Because you know that those people are open to the idea of texting and a tablet. And there's a lot of good things you could do to counter the five star or mogul or whoever else is is in your area uh, with what you can bring to the table. Appointment setting, um, many of you have had experiences with a prior platform that had appointment setting uh, abilities. And they were called smart appointments, which I renamed D- dumb appointments because I was the dumb one to have purchased them. They were worthless. They used a lot of time. They cost a lot of money. And there was someone, I think, in, in either in India or somewhere in the in the Far East who was calling people in, in uh, mid-America trying to set an appointment, and it just didn't work. Um, so um, if you do find somebody who you're comfortable with, who you can get a good list of prospective um, appointments that they can call on, it's certainly worth a try. Um, but for the most part, I can, I can only give you my experience and the experience of those people who I've talked to who have also tried it. It has not been particularly successful. Um, going over to the last column, referrals, I uh, coined the uh, term textual bribery, um, which, you know, bribery works. And especially it's a good thing to do if it's legal. And in the case of text messaging in our business, it is legal. So how do I bribe people? Very simply, I learned that I get probably close to half of my new business over the years is from business to business referrals. I have a good relationship with almost all of my accounts. Why? Because I or Lori or somebody, mostly myself, call them on a regular basis or drop in and see them, even if there's no reason to see them. I make it a practice to try to get in to visit an account to drop in at least once a month just to kibitz with them, just to talk to them about their business, about their family, about the world situation, whatever but to maintain a relationship with them. And I constantly remind them, and I tell them this in the beginning when I'm making my initial sales presentation, that uh, I'm going to come to you after two or three months after you've been with me and you see how well texting works for you. I'm going to come to you and say, who do you know? Who? It doesn't have to be a similar business. It could be any kind of business that needs more customers or more repeat business. Uh, Who do you know that you can refer to me? And I don't want you to give them my card and ask them to call me because we all know that people will throw that card in the trash and will not call. And even if they do call, they're not going to mention your name, so I can't give you any credit for it. So what I want you to do is speak to them, say, would you mind if my buddy George gives you a call? I've been working with him for seven years, and it's a great source of business for me. I think it will help your business. Can I have him call you? Uh, Then have them, Mr. Client of yours, call you with their contact information. You know you'll follow up with that lead, and, of course, you'll know where that lead came from. And what I offer my – this is the bribery part – what I offer my accounts is – Any client that you refer to me who becomes a client, a paying client, I'm going to give you one month, or in the case of of some huge clients, I'll give you $200 or whatever you decide is fair for your business. Uh, Usually a free month uh, works out well, uh, and they love that. And then they forget about that you told them that in the beginning. So when I go and make my monthly business, periodically I'll say, who do you have to send to me? I, you know, I have a free month here in my pocket that I want to give you, and uh, I want to help you out, but I want you to help me out. So by bugging them a little bit that way, um, you know, it, it, it helps them, and it certainly does help you, and that's the best way of getting business from my perspective. Um, as far as tips for a successful demo, there's a lot of them. Let's, and, let's, 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 let's stop right there real quick and pause because there's a couple questions here that came good. up uh, regarding Five Star. So how do we typically sell against Five Star? And there's a few, a few points here that I want to really highlight that will help differentiate you and your solution from Five Star. Okay? And they're all very, very important. Number one, 
Five Star is a massive organization. I, I think last time I read, they got something like $24 million in funding, some crazy amount. They're going out there really trying to just earn market share. That is not a company that's going to provide really great customer support. And I see a few people kind of reiterating that, that their customer service is not going to be great and it's not going to be hands-on like the type of your service that you're going to be providing from your business, which is, you know, you and maybe a handful of other people working with you to solidify that customer relationship. So that's really important. That's something that we like to highlight with iVision as well, that we are very hands-on owners and managers and that we deal with our clients directly and they can always get a hold of us. And I think that is very important to our relationship with our licensees, first and foremost, because you know that you can get in touch with us when you need to, um, but also with our direct clients as well. And I think that is a huge selling point for your business versus a larger Goliath like Five Stars. Number two, when somebody joins the five-star loyalty program, they're now going to be prompted to download the app, and they're also now going to be uh, solicited with other offers that are local to them. So their data, Joe's Pizza, if that's your client or that's the client that's signing up with Five Star, that data is being shared potentially with other local businesses and uh, potentially competitors. You know, where do you define that line of competition? Um, somebody also noted here that you can go on the Five Star website and see all the other businesses there that they're going to be marketing the service to. Um, so that's really important is ownership of data, right? We've, we've heard this come up a lot recently with some of the licensees that have transitioned our system is the ownership of your data. Who owns that data? Who's entitled to that data? And that is very important to your customers. And so you want to make sure that your customers understand that with you, their data is not going to be shared. It's not going to be provided to other competitors. It's going to be accessible to them at any time um, and in, in real time. And so uh, that is very, very important is the ownership of that data because that data is going to have value as that database gets grow, uh, grows larger and larger. It's going to be uh, of substantial value to the business. Um, and then I think the final point with regards to Five Star is that they tell you that their system supports text messaging as if you're a business, but really what they try to do is they try to get you to send push notifications through the app. So they will give you push notifications until the cows come home, but they really limit your ability to send text messaging. And text messaging is by far more, uh, more effective than a push notification, which can be disabled or turned off on the app. So just keep that in mind that those are really great um, points to differentiate your technology from five stars. Um, I'm not sure about whether they give the merchant access to their customer data. I just know that um, it's probably not very easy to access. There's, um, you know, and, and at the end of the day, it's really just a loyalty program. The iVision platform is a mobile communications platform that has a loyalty system built in but it's not the end-all be-all. And I like to really highlight that as well to prospects because it, it tells the prospect that, that they can use the system for more than just loyalty. Oftentimes businesses want to use it for more than just loyalty. So um, that is important to note as well. So let's see here. Uh, what else do we have? Who decides? Uh, if FYI, is by the way, with LA Tech Savings, 20 to 25% of our new business are former five-star licensees who have, for whatever the reason, been unhappy with them. So, uh, you know, it, it, they're competition, but in a way they're really not. Uh, sell yourself, sell your service, um, and sell the platform that we have, and you won't have, have any issue with them. Omar, am I on? Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I think we're good there. I'm not sure about uh, if they do points or, or check-ins, to be honest with you. I think they do both. You know, the most important thing, though, is what you had mentioned initially, the, the two things. Number one is that they share data, and number two is the lack of customer service. Um, those are the two things that I hear over and over again. And they're not cheap, by the way. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I think you should address those things but not dwell on them. Okay. Thank All right. You. As far as, as, as uh, 
tips for a successful demo. I'm going to go over this reasonably quickly because most much of this you know already. If you have the ability to prepare your kiosk before you walk in, if you know you have an appointment tomorrow with Joe's Pizza, go online, get Joe's Pizza's logo, lift it off, and, and, and create a customized uh, kiosk for them. Uh, sometimes I even do a sign, uh, a mock sign that I would have next to the kiosk. It looks like you've really done a lot of work and a lot of homework, and it usually is very impressive. Make sure, don't waste your time. Meet with the decision maker. Make sure that the person that you're meeting with can make a decision or you're totally wasting your time. You're going to have to do it all over again. Uh, so don't be embarrassed to say, do you need anybody else to help you make a decision? Sometimes it's a husband and wife, sometimes, whoever it is. Get that person there uh, and be prepared to reschedule if that person, the decision maker, is not there. Common objections. Too much money. It costs me. It, your system costs too much. Versus what? What are you talking about? Where else are you, uh, Joe from Joe's Pizza, where else are you going to advertise and market your business? If it's a newspaper, first of all, people don't read newspapers, but aside from that, newspapers cost a lot of money. Uh, email, we'll get into that later. Uh, too much money. This is far and away the least expensive and most effective way of marketing virtually any business. And, and I really push that because we really, at least you could set whatever price point you want. We have recommended price points that we use, which you could follow or don't follow, but we certainly make it very, very reasonable. What if someone says to you, my customers don't text, and you're sitting there in a restaurant talking to them. Ask them to look around, and you well know the couples that are sitting there haven't talked in a half hour but are texting probably to each other uh, across the table. Everybody texts today. When I started 10 years ago in this business, texting was people would look at you uh, like you're crazy, and, and I was at that time to have started out. But texting now is so commonplace. Word of mouth is my best source of business. We've all heard that. What is today's word of mouth? Text message marketing. Texting is today's word of mouth. My customers won't give me their phone numbers. Well, they're not going to give you their phone numbers through our service. If you ask for their phone number, you probably won't get it. But if you ask them to tap a number onto a keypad on a kiosk, they'll do it in an instant because they wrongly think that it's going up into a cloud somewhere and no one will ever have access to that. We're also brainwashed with using tablets, whether it's in a supermarket, a gas station, an ATM machine. Uh, people don't think of it in terms of giving phone numbers. I rarely hear this, but I do hear it occasionally. I don't need any more business, and, and the place is empty, right? Um, of course they need more business. They're lying through their teeth. Um, and uh, if, if, if they really don't need more business, you're in the wrong place. You don't need to be pitching someone who doesn't need more business. Rarely will you run into that. I already use email. I have constant contact. Uh, all of my clients love getting my emails. Yeah, but do they read them? You know the numbers. 22% nationally of emails even get opened, let alone read. Ask your, your prospect this. How many emails do you have on your cell phone right now that you haven't read? <laughs> let them look. Sometimes it's going to be thousands. 98%, this is the number I've read and I've been given, 98% of text messages are open and read within the first two to three minutes. doesn't get much better than that. I've tried another texting company. It didn't work. Well, you didn't try us, and it will work. Uh, and, I, you know, while we don't give you a guarantee, uh, this brings me to the next point. We don't, and I'm talking about we being iVision and LA Tech Savings, do not use long-term contracts. Years ago, I was told, get one-year contracts, get two-year contracts, get as long as you can. I did, and, and that was a big drawback. People did not want to sign long-term contracts, and I don't blame them. Because as good as your system is, you can't guarantee that it's going to work for them. So uh, everything we do 
is on a month-to-month basis. We have a 60-day written notice of termination uh, if they do want to cancel. But, you know, I, I tell people, and it's totally true, I've had clients for six, seven, eight, almost 10 years now on a month-to-month basis. And for one reason, because it works. Um, let's because we're getting close to the to the end of the of the session. But uh, another thing that works really well for me. Now it may not work for you. Maybe you don't have, have a sense of humor. Hopefully you do. If you do, use this line. I use it all the time, and I they people laugh, and it breaks down walls. I tell prospects that by the time I'm finished making my presentation to them, they'll have one of only two reactions, the only two possible reactions that you're going to have in the in the next 15 or 20 minutes when I get done showing you what I have to offer. Number one is you will love it. The second reaction you might have is that you'll really love it. Ha, ha, ha. Everybody laughs. It's, it, it's funny, but it's true. What is not to love about what you're offering these people? And that's why I drank the Kool-Aid years ago in this business. I love win-win situations. I tell my prospects, this is a win-win-win situation. Number one, I can make money for you. Number two, I'm going to make money from you. And number three, your customers are going to love what you're doing because you're going to be saving them money uh, through what you're allowing them to be a part of. So everybody comes out ahead in this business. And how many businesses that you know that can say that and really, um, you know, uh, mean it, back it up? Um, Be sure, and this is really important, uh, after you tell them that they're going to love how much they're going to love it or they acknowledge how much they're going to love it, ask them questions about them and about their business. Most salespeople have the same fatal flaw. They don't know when to shut up. And I'm as guilty of it as anybody else, but I've learned to listen. They're going to tell you what you need to tell them. Ask them questions. How do they get started in the business? What do they like best about the business? What differentiates their pizza parlor from every other pizza parlor? Um, and, and again, just sit back and listen. They're going to tell you, you know, I need uh, – my, my lunches are always busy. The place is jammed. But, you know, I, if I could figure out a way to get people in at dinner time, that would be a great benefit to me. Uh, you know, do you deliver? You want to tell, find out about their business. How many of their customers even know that they deliver their product within a certain radius? That would be a great subject for one particular text message. Do you know that we deliver? Um, do you know that we cater at parties, office parties, home parties? All good stuff that maybe they're taking, they're making the assumption that their customers know about, and they don't. So, uh, again, you're not going to know unless you ask people and talk about them. And they're going to appreciate them because now they become important because you want to know stuff from them. Uh, But you've got to shut up and listen to be able to get it, not just, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, and now let me tell you this. Listen, even if you're taking notes, which is even more effective because it shows them that you care about what they're telling you. Uh, Find out about... Uh, the slowest days of the week, because you can push people in at the slowest days of the week, slowest times of the, of the day. What sir, what a product or service do they make the most money on? Um, you know, all these kind of things. And I love the question about if I could do wave a magic wand and do anything for your business as far as helping you create more money, what would it be? And boy, their their answer to that question um, will will tell you an awful lot about which direction you should be going in, uh, because it may be totally different than you or I imagined walking in that door. But uh, just just listen to them; very very important. Um, ideas that work, and I'll touch on that for just a second. Um, I with LA Tech Savings brought to the table the concept of, I know that if my accounts are not sending out regular text messages, and by regular text messages, either once a week, 
no less than every once every other week because part of what we do is branding. Uh, so even if someone doesn't use that text, they've read that text, and Joe's Pizza is in their mind and on their cell phone, and they can have access to it. They can also forward it uh, to a lot of other people. So I know if they're not sending regular texts, in several months they're going to contact me and say, George, your system sucks. doesn't work. I love you, but it's not working. And I'm going to say, Joe, the last time you sent out a text was two and a half months ago. And I've been begging you to send out text. So what I've done to, pro to try to prevent that, and it works to a large extent, is I built into my agreement, and I tell them about it during the presentation because I like to lay all the costs out at the time I'm meeting with them so there are no financial surprises. Number one, I have a setup and programming fee. Number two, we have our monthly management fee for X number of text messages. And number three is if you do not send out a minimum of two texts a month. Now, uh, in some cases, I'll very alter that because it's the kind of business maybe one text a month is enough. But it, usually two texts I, I, I would uh, like to see. If you don't send out two texts a month, I'm going to charge you. I'm going to penalize you for not sending out text messages because I know you're going to cancel on me uh, down the road because you're not getting results. And the results are because you're not sending out texts. So I'm charging you $50 if you don't send out two texts a month. Now what happens is the first time they get charged that $50 um, because w which we will charge them on their account because they didn't send out the two texts, I'll get a call. And the call is, what's that $50 charge about, George? And I'll remind them of this conversation. Sometimes they'll re remember it. Sometimes they won't. But then I become a good guy. And I say, you know what, Joe, this time only, I'm going to refund that $50. I don't want your money. I want you to send out text messages. But if you don't send out texts in the future, two texts a month, I'm not going to refund the $50. Now, that takes care of most of that situation. But honestly, I have probably three, maybe four accounts that month in and month out, they never send out texts. They never cancel. We charge them $50 a month each month, and I know eventually they're going to cancel. But I figure I may as well get paid in the interim. I've been fully honest with them in disclosing it. And if they want to just pay money for nothing, I'll take it. Um, so that's what that's all about. Um, Again, I told you about visiting clients at least once a month. We, uh, um, uh, Lori and Rodrigo in our office, we will send out text suggestions to our clients to make it easier for them uh, so they have no excuse for not sending out texts. We also suggest surveys, polling to get more customer uh, input. And I mentioned earlier the reputation management as an additional add-on, which works wonderfully, gives you more income, gives the account uh, some great support. You know, to, in this day and age, social media, Facebook, Yelp, Google, all very, very important. Getting good five-star reviews are critical. The reason most people, most customers don't give five-star reviews, even though they love the business, is because they don't, uh, they don't have the time. They'll do it when they get around to it, and they just procrastinate and never do it. And I'm as guilty as anybody else of this. So with the repu reputation management system, uh, we can periodically uh, request of the customers to review that particular Joe's Pizza. Do you love it? If you love it, push this button, and through the reputation management funnel, they'll get they'll be taken directly to that customer's Yelp page or Google or whatever they want to uh, have it, and and be able to uh, put a five star, four star, or five star review in instantly, and it's extremely convenient. But what happens if they they hate Joe's Pizza? They just found a hair on their pepperoni, and they want to really pan Joe. Well, instead of telling the world. Um, the, the funnel will then uh, put, post a form right on their t cell phone. They complete that form. It's a very short form, name, email, address, phone number, comment. Joe's Pizza sucks, um, and they, they hit the send, and that little form goes directly to Joe and doesn't go to Yelp or Google or whoever else. Now, it doesn't prevent them from, from posting a negative review, but the chances are they vented, and if Joe is smart now, because Joe just got this, this comment form, 
Joel pick up the phone, uh, reply to the email, whatever. Gee, I'm so sorry this happened. What can I do to make my experience, your experience better with our company? And this will generally disarm it. And in 80 to 90 percent of the time, it will not go any further and you won't get a bad review posted uh, on social media. So uh, I charge, we charge $50 a month in addition to whatever else we're charging them for this service. Most businesses love it because, again, I I view it as this is you're buying additional insurance, business protection insurance, uh, by buying reputation management. So you can get more good reviews and get higher Google ratings, rankings, and, and prevent uh, or help prevent the negative reviews. It's well worth the $50 a month charge. No one has to do it, and they can cancel it at any time. But I find that probably at least half my clients do it because they see the value in it. That's all I got, Omer. Anything else that you want to add? Um, no. Uh, there's one other question here that came in uh, real quick before we sign off, and that's uh, somebody mentioned that they use the platform in a senior living facility, and then there was a question asked about how it's used for that vertical. And I think the main takeaway with text messaging is, that, look, you're using text messaging to communicate. If it's a senior living facility, perhaps they're not using it for loyalty program, but maybe they're using it to communicate with caregivers. Maybe they're using it to communicate with those in the facility about upcoming events, things like event promotion, exactly. And so these are the things that you want to keep in mind when you're talking to a business, you're talking to a prospect. Every business, every organization is communicating, and they're communicating with their customers, they're communicating with their prospects, they're communicating with their employees. And some of that communication is marketing related, but a lot of that communication is non-marketing related. And when you start to approach text messaging from that perspective and your solution from that perspective, it really opens up the door to working with just about any type of business out there. We work with almost every vertical out there doing just about every type of communication. So keep that in mind as you go out there and pursue clients that there's really an application for every business, every organization. If you ever need help, need guidance, reach out to us. We're happy to have these discussions with you. Um, thank you again all for your time today. We'll go ahead and post this in the uh, reseller portal and also um, send it out via email. So we appreciate everybody's time. If anybody has any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us directly. And thank you, George, for your time today on the presentation. Have a good day, everybody.